Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. I'm a relationship hack. What's up, y'all? Shut it down, boy. Cut these my name is True. We can shut it down. And these are my true stories. Shut it down. Boy, cut these motherfuckers. We can shut it I down. I got some real shit to tell you. Shut it down. Shut it down. Boy, cut these hey. motherfuckers. We can shut, shut it down. The new Truth EP is going to be crazy. I took him into the studio. I don't know if people follow me on Periscope. Last Wednesday, I Periscoped him. The new album is... We're going to record it right this time. Right? Last time, he was recording it in a bathroom in a, in a hotel somewhere. Literally. And I was like, yo, it's fire. Let's, let's put it out here. But this time, I got him in the studio with Broadway. Oh, dude. We got some fire, too. We got some fire. It's like, it's classic hip-hop. There's one thing about hip-hop and our people. Turn it down just a taste, man. With hip-hop, we tend to throw away styles and genres like young kids will be like that's old that's old i don't even listen to that right whereas other music genres kind of venerate their old school we kind of just discard them you know this is gonna feel like a brand new public enemy bdp big daddy kane album it's really sick so I i'm excited about it. he about to re-record -re this record and we're gonna really like get his voice right and you know blow the beat all the way out it's gonna be nuts man that truth album is gonna be sick so with that said you know i gotta promote businesses we juice this is what my homeboy got for us now hassan is the brother who created we juice we juice.com so this is what we got free shipping on the three-day cleanse if you go to wejuice.com you're gonna get free shipping if you order the three-day cleanse he was just here you know what i think you should ask him about these little shots this is a, a turmeric shot he brings me like four of these a turmeric shot right turmeric and ginger just straight turmeric straight ginger it's good for you man i mean He's not advertising this on his website. Up, Maybe I shouldn't have been advertising. Boy, anyway, get at my man, wejuice.com. It's important. Also, you got to support Bobby Glanton. You can't listen to Bobby when it come to Laker talk, but you damn sure better listen to Bobby when it comes to manhood. Real Men Don't Play. This is a book. Hey, listen, this is a manhood manual. I've read it. It's a manhood manual. My son got it. You got to get it for your peoples, too. Very important that you do that. And then somebody sent me this book. I am deeply appreciative of this book. Because it's got one of my favorite philosophers in it. But I'm going to read the whole thing. It's a spiritual approach to male and female relations. Edited by Scott Miners. Very good book here. I can tell you that already. I'm going to read it. I suggest you read it with me. Go get your copy ASAP. Somebody told me to bring back the book selection where I open up my Kindle, my private little library, and your library crazy too. I know he got at least six, 7,000 books. I got at least four, 5,000 books. Speaking of books, please continue to support the movement. Listen, we got 80 reviews on Kindle. The 80 reviews that we got on the Amazon Kindle, 
I would say 96% of those re reviews are five star reviews for the relationship dismount. Listen, you can get this book and you could be in a relationship. Some people are afraid to read this book because they think, oh, is this going to break up my relationship? It will not. It will enhance your relationship if you're brave enough to sit down and have these real kind of conversations, you know, with your with your loved one. And it's always good to go through this stuff before shit get bad. See, people run to this book when things are bad. No, come to this book when it ain't bad. And then you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, okay. You know, it's going to enhance whatever good qualities that are in the relationship already. So go to my website, IamZoeWilliams.com. Can you pull up the website and let them see what it looks like? Go to IamZoeWilliams.com. If you order today, it's free shipping. I'll send it out to you tomorrow. That's what's up on that. Now, we've got a couple more things to promote. There's the website. You see that? You go over there to that little thing that says shop. Pow. And there it is. Scroll up real quick. Or scroll down, pow, add to cart, and it's a wrap. No shipping and handling on that. I'll take care of that. It's free. Free shipping and handling. So get your copy of The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship, and enjoy your relationship. Don't try to save it once it's broken. <laughs> you feel me? Also, I want you guys to support this brother out in Atlanta. Easy Boy Web. They built my website. These guys are dope. And they do all types of uh, e-commerce, social media. These guys built my website, and they put it on this new hosting site that will check your stuff every week to make sure it's not being attacked. They send me reports. Hey, your website is clean, no attacks. You're good. This guy right here in Atlanta, I think his name is Landon. Landon's a great guy. You got to support him right now. One last thing I'm going to promote, and then we're going to get right to it. One last thing I'm going to promote. We're going to let you promote your stuff. Or I'm going to put them kicks on you again. Now, <laughs> I want to promote Arise Hospitality. Black Home Depot. Come on, man. Black Office Max. Black staples. They get the same quality stuff, the same stuff, literally, that these other places, these huge change chains sell. They get the same stuff. So if you're in a business, a black owned business, why why go anywhere else? As a matter of fact, Freedom Paper. Is it Freedom Paper Company, right? I love this company. Somebody sent me a picture of a giant box of toilet tissue that they got from these people. I love it. Black owned company create their own toilet paper. There's no reason you should have a cartoon bears in your bathroom. No reason. This is what this show is about today. And then the final thing we're going to promote today is the homeboy. No, we got a sister on the line too, right? Final thing we're going to promote today is the sister on the line, but my homeboy has some things to promote. Kev? Booty boxing. Uh, Wait, start over because your mic was off. Chris, thank you. Appreciate that. But uh, go ahead and get that booty boxing home system, that eight-week home system. Um, remember, New Year's is coming up, so all your New Year's resolutions, get the booty in shape, get your uh, mind right, eat that food, it's nutrition, everything is there. So go ahead and get that at Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y dot com slash booty boxing, and the promo code is Zoe What Show. Come on, don't play yourself. You Don't know, play yourself. You know you're going to eat for Christmas, so go ahead and hook that up. All right, so we got a sister on the line right now. Sister, come on in and, and introduce yourself to the listeners and tell us really quickly what you have to promote. Hi, I'm Lene Javet. I am the CEO and founder of Pulsire.com. Um, that's the, in the words culture and desire. Um, our website, basically, it's, a, it's the home for the narrative that describes living with melanin. It's a place that encompasses all aspects of our journey. We celebrate our accomplishments. We offer solutions for our, short company, our uh, shortcomings. And we'd like to think that we expose our potential to greatness. We provide a blueprint for future generations um, that allow us to follow our ancestors' footprints. So um, at Closire, we tell black life stories, good, bad, or indifferent. We don't sugarcoat it, but we like to present to the black community. 
Um, I'm here today specifically because Facebook banned us for promoting, uplifting, and empowering, uh, providing empowering information to unite our community. So I appreciate you letting me take a minute to tell your audience about our Black Business Catalog. Uh, the Black Business Holiday Catalog has over 50 pages of 100 Black-owned businesses for holiday mm. shopping, mm. ranging from um, dolls, toys, cosmetics, we have hair products, clothes, black cigar manufacturers, black wineries, accessories, art stationery, um, gifts for her, we have gifts for him, and, it's, and so much more. So we just wanted to let people know that the Black Business Holiday Catalog, it's available. Um, there are black merchants that we can shop at, we can circulate dollars in our community this holiday season. And I appreciate you giving us a minute to, to share that information. If anyone is interested in supporting a black business this holiday season, you can go to www.blackbusinesscatalog.com. Mm. Again, that's blackbusinesscatalog.com. There you go, Lene. We appreciate you calling in today. That was a great, great piece of information. Anytime you'd like to call in, just let me know. And we'll continue to promote the black business catalog. I love it. Thank you so much. So with that said, we're about to take a quick break. When we come back, the topic, we'll be back at 2.2. Zoe what morning. Holla. When you get paid, the whole world is waiting for you to give it away to people from other races so you can put their kids through school. But your babies is getting exterminated on the streets every day. Today's mathematics is 1.1 trillion. That's how much money my Studied, niggas uh, at Emory University and had the honor of being a congressional aide to civil rights hero Congressman John Lewis. And after that, I went to Chicago and got my MBA and my law degree at the University of Chicago, where I also got to learn from another hero of mine, taught constitutional law by then Professor Barack Obama, and now the President of the United States. We fell in love while we were in graduate school. Now that's John and I, not the President and I. <laughs> we found great success in corporate America, uh, got married, bought our pretty house in our pretty suburb, had our two pretty little girls, and we're living out our picture-perfect, comfortable Cosby life. But when we analyzed the rest of the black community, we saw that things were getting worse and worse for most black people. We felt guilty about that. We felt bad about that. So we gave more to our black church. We gave more to the NAACP and the UNCF. Wasn't that enough? Philanthropy is commendable, but it must not cause a philanthropist to overlook the circumstances of economic injustice which make philanthropy necessary. Dr. Martin Luther King said that. Now, what is this economic injustice he was talking about? What are these circumstances he was talking about? In America, in the Asian community, the dollar circulates among the community's banks and retailers and professionals for about 28 days before it leaves the community. In uh, Jewish communities, that circulation period is about 19 days. In WASP communities, uh, predominantly white areas, if you will, uh, the dollar stays uh, 17 days. Uh, my Hispanic brothers and sisters keep their dollar for about a week. And in the black community, the community Dr. King was slain fighting for, we keep our dollar for six hours. Let me tell you what that means in real life terms. That means in Asian communities, uh, Asian kids get to see business owners who look like them every day, all the time. There are Asian banks and insurance companies and grocery stores all over the community, and those uh, businesses employ from the community, and the families take care of those businesses and vice versa. Asian unemployment in America is at a low 4 to 5%. Most Asian Americans, over 50%, are self-employed or employed by Asian firms. That those circumstances, that economic and business growth, lead to high educational attainment. Uh, there's uh, business and political power, low poverty, strong businesses, uh, low crime in Asian neighborhoods. Six hours in the black community, let me tell you what that means. That means that black kids can't see business owners who look like them every day. There are no black-owned grocery stores and dry cleaners and pharmacies and clothing stores locally owned in the black community. So the people there cannot get jobs, much less create jobs in the community. So black unemployment in places like Detroit and Gary and Oakland, sometimes 40 percent. And those circumstances lead to social problems like recidivism, high crime, high gang and drug activity, poverty, 
that's what's going on with those six hours. And those disparities cause the same kind of problems in the corporate space. 60% of the money that is spent with Asian suppliers in corporate America, so your Asian professional firms, Asian products you see on the shelves, used to be spent with black-owned businesses. And the same kind of shift has happened between Hispanic businesses and black-owned businesses. That's why when you go into a grocery store, you'll see whole aisles full of products coming from Asian companies, from Hispanic companies. So let's go to the grocery store, the drugstore, and see where the black-oriented products are. You go there, you'll see products like these. You'll see Spoten Wave and Less Jam and Smooth and Shine and Dark and Lovely and Strength of Nature and Dark and Natural and Stay Soft Fro. All those products, products that only black people buy every day, 100% black market. All those products are owned by L'Oreal, a company out of France. All those billions of dollars leave the black community. Some of that money could come back if L'Oreal had supplier diversity, if L'Oreal was doing any business with black-owned firms. L'Oreal only has black buyers, no black suppliers. Same deal with Hennessy. Hennessy, Wall Street Journal estimates between 60 to 80 percent of Hennessy's U.S. market comes from the black community. That means that Hennessy closes down tomorrow without black consumers. Billions and billions of dollars going outside of the community. Hennessy has no black distributors, no black suppliers, does not advertise in black-owned media, or use black-owned advertising agencies. So, bottom line. Black, uh, most of the businesses in black areas Radio are not black-owned. Most of the products... What did you play opposite Andy and oh. Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I, played, I played a news anchor and... You played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that who played my sister? You played his wife, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's, a great range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Hey, I'm Dean Cain, and you are watching T Radio V. I'm watching it too. Right now. Seriously. <laughs> hey, hello, hello. This is David Faustino, and you are watching T Radio V. Do you see what I'm saying? It's television crossed with radio. It's all together. It's weird. Radio's in the middle of it. I, it's amazing. You're watching it. Go. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there. I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a Thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio in TV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Levels of organization. When building a city, you start with bricks. Many bricks joined together makes a wall. Walls working together make a building, and many buildings complete the city. The human body is put together in a similar way. Humans start with cells. Many cells joined together make tissue. Tissue working together make an organ. And many organs make an organ system. Cells are the smallest living part of an organism. Some examples of cells in the human body are brain cells, lung cells, and bone cells. When cells of similar structure and function joined together, they form tissue. A group of brain cells is called brain tissue. A group of lung cells is called lung tissue. And bone cells joined together is called bone tissue.
When a group of tissues that perform a specific function join together, they form organs. Brain tissue comes together to make your brain. Your brain is an organ. Lung tissue comes together to make your lungs. And bone tissue comes together to make individual bones. An organ system is a collection of organs working together to perform jobs. Your brain is a part of the nervous system. Your brain, spinal cord, and nerves work together to collect and process information. Your lungs are a part of the respiratory system. Along with the diaphragm and others, they help you breathe. All of the bones in your body are a part of the skeletal system. Bones, cartilage, ligaments, and tendons give your body structure and support. So from smallest to largest, your body is made up of cells, tissue, organs, and then organ systems. These are the levels of organization. I know, I know, the video seems a bit rudimentary, <laughs> but it's unfortunate that we got to resort to that level to get us to see that we are, whether we want to agree on it or not, a part of an organization, right? A part of a living organism. So that brings us to today's topic. Very important that you guys lock into what I'm about to say. On the Zoe What Show today, today's topic is the fellowship of the bling. <laughs> Not the fellowship of the ring, but the fellowship of the bling. <laughs> A deeper look into developing organizational systems for community cooperation. Basically, a community life skills show. Why is that important? Because it's easy to cry, cry foul. Oh, the system is kicking my ass because we're not organized. <laughs> there you go. Oh, racism. <laughs> <laughs> we came with bootstraps. It's, it's easy to be screaming shit. Yeah. When we're disorganized, we don't have the fellowship of the bling. Kevin was like, man, so we got to do a show on organization. Where are yes. the organizational boot camps that are being laid out there by the so-called black leaders today? I mean, with the because the thing that pissed me off about the black leaders is you got to join whatever group they with. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever belief system. And mm -hmm. when I say group, we all a group by default because we, we, we peoples. Right? By default, we're peoples. Right. But we got to join a religious base. And then we got to change our dress <laughs> tie. I got I to gotta get some prayer beads, some liquor beads. Tithing. I got to start tithing. <laughs> I gotta, why can't we just create an organizational system yes. to where we all look out for each other regardless of the belief system behind whatever groups we are or we're, we're associated or affiliated with? That's why it was important, Kevin said, man, let's do the fellowship of the bling. And so I want in this show, my objective is to give tips and pointers on what organization is, what it means, what is the end result of it. You saw we showed these videos, that sister, that video yes. is 18 minutes long. And she's breaking down group after group after group after group. And I'm talking about the businesses who sit in a position like pretty much like a pariah, like, yep. yeah, the black community need <laughs> this, but we'll provide it, but we're not doing any bi-directional movement with them. It's no. just money coming out of them to us. There's no reciprocity coming back. Zombie spending money. That, so today's topic, Fellowship of the Bling, we've got Doc Barham in the building, uh, Transformational Life Coach. Where do they find your website, Doc? Uh, they can go to docbarham.org, D-O-C-B-A-R-H-A-M.org, and they can find my website there. It's uh, actually a splash page or landing page right now. The, the new website's being rebuilt. Right. Uh, being built. It'll be up shortly. We got the OG uncle in the building who's going to cuss everybody out if they get it wrong. Uncle Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Bobby Glanton-Smith, author of Real Men Don't Play. 
That's it, Bobby? That's all you got? <laughs> Bobby know. was boisterous than a motherfucker a few minutes ago. Don't know shit about the Lakers. Hey, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I love him, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but he's the wisdom in the building, and he can come from a perspective many decades before us, and he can also see kind of a trajectory on where we're going. And then my homeboy in the building, Kevin Berenger. Kevin, are we ready to tackle this? We got Veronica Conway on the line, too, right? Let's do it. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. fellowship of the bling. Why is it necessary to have a fellowship? What quest is the African American community <laughs> embarking upon? <laughs> right? Who's holding the ring and who we gotta protect so he can get to Mordor? <laughs> fellowship of the bling. That's what we're talking about today, <laughs> goddammit. So let's jump right into it. Do black people, I, I would say, the African-American community, blacks, do we have like a misunderstanding of organization? Like, do we not know its importance? And why is it so difficult for us to come together? Kevin? Well, it's the lack of knowledge or information of what it means to organize or what an organization is. And um, I've been through this. The reason I wanted to do this show because I've been trying to get with a lot of brothers for years. and. Some way or another, you know, brothers, oh, man, I'm doing this. Oh, I can't do it. They, they try to jump in. They, they jump in, in the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they're right. enthused at the beginning. Then when the work starts to happen, they're like, oh, man, okay. Uh, oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Or when you're in the organization, right. everybody wants to be the leader. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to be the worker. And so in an, organ in an organization or the, uh, the knowledge of how to organize has been lost. And the reason this show is called Fellowship of the Bling is because if you've ever seen The Lord of the Rings, uh, the ring or the symbolism that the ring represents is the knowledge that was lost from black people. But it also mm -hmm. represents the unity that, or the, the um, understanding of, and knowledge of how, to, of how to organize and to unify. And that's what really the ring is, because once you, no matter what, you, how much information you have, if you're not organized, if you don't, if you're not a team, if you don't have people backing you up, you can't do much of shit. And that's just how it goes. Mm. So, brothers, and and really everybody, period, but bro definitely black people, we need to understand how to get together and how to work together, and how not to let animosity and all those little bullshit things that get in the way of us working together. Um, how to push that to the side, and because trust me, uh, white people they don't they don't they don't deal with that shit. If they got if they got problems, if they got this, they don't none of that shit. What needs to be done? How do we do it? Okay, you're handling that. You're handling that. You're handling that. You're handling that, and they work and they get the shit done. Black people, not so much. Bobby, um, I don't know. Well, there are <laughs> exceptions to all of the rules, and what we have to do is look at the models. <coughs> Excuse me. The models of possibility, um, you mentioned the knowledge, we also have to have frames of reference. Mm. And throughout our history in this country, I just made notation of some organizations that we could draw from if we have, first and foremost, a, a, a unifying concept. In other words, a motive. Because most things that we do in life is motive driven. Yes, and I'm, I'm hearing the music already. Are we going to commercial? No, 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 no. Just finish your point <laughs> and then I'll take us to commercial. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Without that motive, a common motive, then it's, we dissipate into all these, these varying directions. If we can simply rally around the fact that everybody on the planet wants the same thing, food, clothing, shelter, we want to be loved, we want to be appreciated, we want to be respected. So we have to kind of put all of those things into the pot before we begin to try to construct some, because otherwise we'll go in all these varying different directions. So you look at organizations like the UNIA, Universal Negro Improvement Association that Marcus Garvey started. We can pull from the fact that he rallied us around a commonality that was based on the fact that what men have done, men can do. So we just need to look at best practices, but it starts with the motivation. What motivates us to the point where we won't get distracted and go in all these opposite directions? And there are some central themes that we can that we can rally around, and that's the fact that we all want to have a sense of purpose. We want to have some measure of comfort, and then you start looking for the pieces that coalesce without you having to just struggle with somebody. You know, wow. find people that you have common interests with and build on that. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our first break, but we'll be back with Doc Barm and Veronica Conway's take 
on the Fellowship of the Bling. <laughs> we'll be back in 2.2. Man, consciousness is a creative act. And the kind of consciousness you have yeah. will determine the kind of world you create. You create. Yeah. You create. You create. What it do is your man Money B from Digital Underground asking everybody to check out the Going Way Back show. Your home for classic hip hop, raw and uncut. Join me and me, DJ Always, as well as Ty Teasy bringing you the old school new news every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T Radio V. That's right, Radio MTV. Hey, what's up? It's Tom Logan in the house, and you're tuned into T Radio V. Talk about me and my niggas, them outlaw worldwide my figures. From triumph to tragedy, to right back on top, and niggas still mad at me for pushing that big truck on 24. My square feet and ATL game locked up. Uh -huh. Now that's what my nigga got shot for, being too motherfucking raw for this fuck boy. See the darkness, see the light, he wanna kill it. Misery loves company, and that's the real shit. But in 2004. Yo, what's up, what's up? This is Too Short, and you're watching T-Radio V. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? This your boy Crazy Bone. Man, I'm the bum Keith G, man. And whenever you sitting at home and can't shake the monkey off your back... Yeah, yeah. ...then just know every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., right. you can tune in to the Quick Fix and get your fix on, man. Right here on T-RadioV.com, baby. Radio... And TV. So how they gonna see us on the radio then? Radio? I, I don't know. Or is it TV and radio? But it's, it's it, one of them. I gotta figure this radio and TV thing out though, bro. I don't Get understand. I'm gonna tell together. my mom what we how she gonna see Get us. Get it together. This video will teach you about levels of organization in terms of biology. Levels of organization is known as a hierarchy, which you can think of as a series of steps or more like a pyramid that we'll see a little bit later. The lowest level in our hierarchy is the cell. The cell is the basic unit of structure and function in living things. And this is going to be our working definition for cell, even if it looks a little bit different on the later slides. I've gone back and re-edited this slide. But um, the cell is a basic unit because it's the smallest thing in, in a body that will do all of the functions needed to um, keep something alive. We can see a diagram, a computer generated uh, image of some cells. And this is going to be the lowest level of organization in our body. So let's look at the next highest level. The next level of organization is tissue. A tissue is a group of cells that perform the same function. And for our example, you can see... As you can see, there's a hierarchy of the chain of command. So the person at the top, the chief executive officer, oversees the next level down, which is the C-level managers, the chief marketing officer, chief finance officer, and chief information technology officer. And then those C-level managers oversee the next level of managers, for example, the chief marketing officer might oversee three different first-line managers, and they would be broken down into the department based on their specialty. And the same goes for finance and IT, and so they would be broken down as well. Beneath the first-line managers, you see the employees. This hierarchy can be much larger. It could have dozens of layers, or it could have less layers than this. With a bureaucratic type of organization, it can take a really long time for decisions to be made since there's so many layers of management. So some companies are trying to empower their lower level managers to be able to make certain decisions. Now organization is a highly abstract concept, but we can loosely equate it to the idea of order, with its opposite being what is called entropy or disorder. Order and entropy are typically measured by scientists in terms of information, that is, the more information it takes to describe something, the more disordered the system is said to be. Emergence. Ant colonies are classical examples given of emergence. Ants, governed by very simple rules and only local interactions, can through their combined activities generate colonies that exhibit complex structures and behavior that far exceed the intelligence or capability of any individual ant, and thus it is said to have emergent properties. 
Ant colonies also illustrate the decentralized structure to self-organizing systems. The queen does not tell the other ants what to do. Instead, each ant reacts to stimuli in the form of chemical scent exchanged with other ants. In this way, organization is distributed over the whole system. All parts contribute evenly to the resulting arrangement. And we're back in the building. T Radio V, that's radio and TV live, the Zo What Morning Show. Today's topic is the Fellowship of the Bling. We were getting into the conversation. Bobby said some heavy shit. Bobby, you have one more thought to make, and then I'm going to go to uh, uh, Veronica Conway and Doc Barham. A lot of people know of Marcus Garvey, but they didn't really <clears throat> immerse themselves in his movement, the Universal Negro Improvement Association. That was one of the most powerful thrusts in the history of our our presence in the United States as a group of people. He actually was able to go across the country and raise millions of dollars and sign up thousands of members who were very, very passionate and consistent with their belief in us doing for ourselves. What co-opted that internally were people like W.B. Du Bois, Jackie Robinson, and other folks that didn't feel comfortable standing out and identifying ourselves as an entity that needed to first and foremost support each other. And so when we look at what we got to do in 2015 and going forward, we've got to establish the fact that whatever we do, we have to do it unapologetically. Right. Veronica? <clears throat> yeah, I, I love this topic. I think this is probably uh, my, my wheelhouse, and, and I'll, say, I'll say it. Everything is your wheelhouse, Veronica. Um, Stop playing. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because you know, I founded the world's first organization of black success coaches. There are other ones now, because I, le- I kind of let that go on purpose. But I founded the world's force- first organization of black success coaches. So we basically took coaching from a black perspective, culturally competent success and business coaching, into the black community nationally. So we partnered with a lot of black organizations. We, I, I coach, I've coached. I've been in the Negro business for a long time, and because I led a national organization of coaches, <laughs> my, the coaches that were, that were in my mix also were coaching black business leaders. Black. So I would say that I have a pretty interesting insight into how black businesses function, how black organizations function, because when you're coaching organizations and leaders, you have a very intimate understanding of how they function and how they don't function. I just, want to, I just want to preface it by saying that. Now, I know Maggie Anderson, right? I know Maggie Anderson, the, the sister that was in the video. And one of the things that I know about pioneers in our community, I ran into Maggie at a National Urban League conference a couple of years ago. And I said, Maggie, you know, you're doing such amazing work. I was there kind of in the, in the mix when she was beginning that work because George Frazier said, was saying at a conference, he was saying, you know, Black folks, you, we got to buy from our own. So she took that on. She went out and and took that on. And when I saw her at this conference, she was in tears. And I said, "What's wrong?" And she said, "This is so hard, and our people don't support us." So here's what I will say about it: When you are a pioneer in the black community, and I see it over and over with black leaders, we get slaughtered by white folks. And she was getting death threats mm-hmm. and saying, you're racist for trying to get folks to buy black. But we experience apathy from our own. Mm-hmm. In other words, a system that's like that should have every black person in the United States should find out a way to have her back. But we don't because we're so busy in survival. We're mm-hmm. so busy watching scandal. We're so busy <laughs> doing a bunch of shit that doesn't really mean a goddamn thing in the scheme of things. And we're fascinated with the, with, the, with the trivial few versus the critical many. And so our, our leaders don't get the support that they deserve because we're too busy on some dumb shit. Yep. <laughs> and the lone white man in the building will speak now. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Burb! Tell them what they think about it. <laughs> well, I could, well, I guess to me it's, uh, you could go back to entropy and neg entropy, right? Mm. Things are cohering together, or they're falling, falling, uh, falling apart. Mm. And if you, I think any person can relate the sense of uh, things falling apart within themselves. As we get older, our our bodies begin to break down. But it doesn't have to be that way. If we put ourselves together on the inside in a coherent, organized way, mm. it will show in your body. It will show in your thoughts. It will show in your emotions. It will show in your attitudes, your expectations. It will show in your life skills. Wow. 
right? If you uh, choose to follow an incoherent path, you're gonna, you see it all the time. You see p two people say who are 50 years old and one person looks like they're about 70 and another person looks like they're about 30. Mm. These are based on choices. Now yes. that, to me, that same thing that happens within relates to the same kind of organization of individuals coming together in groups. And like she's talking about, it really, in my, in my opinion, has a lot to do with what is it that you're focusing on? Because what you focus on is what you're gonna get more of. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to organize and cohere together over and over and over again until that shows up more and more in your life. Mm -hmm. And there is a massive amount of distraction in the, on the internet, in the media, with what I consider to be essentially lowest common denominator, entertainment, Ooh. information, and things like mm -hmm. that that's taking people away from what they could be. Right. Uh, so what ends up being some sort of a, a short-term, I guess, pleasure ends up being, in, in, my, in my mind, in, in the long run, uh, a, a lot of waste. So two points to build on. Um, one is Bobby's point, and one is your point about organizing the self, right? Most people, in my experience, from the black community use organizations in the same way they use bad relationships they run into the organization so it, it, it in a way so i don't have to do the work i'll join this organization do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i can't do it by myself let me join this organization and then feel like i'm a part of something greater but i'm not really mm -hmm. doing the work the organization is doing the work yep. a lot of people run into relationships in the same way you know what I'm not going to do the work of understanding why, you know, the last one broke down and the trauma associated with it. I'm going to get in another one <laughs> so I don't have to feel that shit no more. <laughs> a lot of people join organizations in the same way, right? That's especially religious ones, oh. right, number one. That's to speak to your point uh -huh. about self-organization first. Uh, Krishnamurti said, if you want to change the world, you must first change yourself. Yes. So a lot of people will start with the organ. Let me join something thinking that that will change them. But what really needs to change before they even join anything is themselves. Self-organization. I like that. To speak to Bobby's point, let's remember, there's always an anti-hero Negro. You got Marcus Garvey, but then there's always a W.E.B. Du Bois. Right? Who's on the other side of the coin shitting on the work that Marcus Garvey was trying to do. There's always another scholar like, no, I don't think that that is the proper way to do it. Well, what the fuck is you doing? Right? And, and, let me, and the reason why I say that is because these two sisters stump for Trump, baby. The two coon sisters that are banging for a bigot. See, we got these yep. in our community where we got to say, hey, you, you on house arrest. At least... <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? At least Elijah Muhammad had the authority to say, Malcolm, be quiet for 90 days. We need a body of people that can step in and go, you two diabetes sufferers, be quiet. You don't get to speak on this right now. It's obvious that Donald Trump is a bigot. Yep. I've never seen a presidential candidate be as blatantly racist <laughs> as Donald Trump. I mean, he going after black people. He going after Mexicans. He don't give a damn. And then when you get black people to stand in solidarity with that. Yep. He's like the Don Rickles of presidential candidates. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bobby? Two, two concepts that have to be, I think, at the apex of whatever we decide we want to do when we finally decide to do something consistently about our condition. Outcomes and uh, accountability. If we're not building whatever <clears throat> we want to become as a participant in world order, if it's not driven by outcomes and accountability, it's unsustainable. Because I have been to so many meetings where there was never really an agenda. It was a lot of emotion. Right. Yep. And you have to start from that. Don't have another meeting without an agenda, and you don't allow people to ask the question that becomes a commentary. 
Mm. Two yeah. hours later, the meeting's over with. Yeah. We forgot what the meeting was about. Right. And now we're going to argue about when we're going to have the next meeting. Exactly. And, I'm, and if there's going to be chicken at it. I'm done with all of that. <laughs> and then the other part of it is accountability. The one thing that I, I'll use a basketball analogy very quickly. When Magic Johnson came to the Los Angeles Lakers, even before he was with the Lakers, probably when he was in high school, Magic figured out one thing. I may not be the best athlete on the court, but I know how to win. Yeah. And I know how to impregnate mm -hmm. winning into, into the people mm -hmm. around me. Into everything he does. Yeah. You see, so we have to pull, again, from best practices. I like that. I like that. Models of possibilities. Go ahead. And, Kev? Uh, well, going back to the self-organization, the reason we're showing the videos of um, – of bi Organisms bi yeah, biological and cells. Yeah, organization is because an organization, if you look at the word organization, organ is in it. And so the definition of organized is to furnish with organs so as to form a living being and hence provide <laughs> with a coordinated structure. <laughs> So say even, word. So going to an organ, just the word organization, or going to a corporation. Even corporation comes from corpus, which, which is body. Body. So you're supposed to run these things like the human body, and so that it, it goes back to self knowledge. So if you don't know how your body runs, then you can't you you can't know how to run an organization because it's literally mm. an organ. So you know it starts off with the cell then cells who group together that do the same thing, then they become tissue, then those tissues who group together to become the same thing, they, they form an organ, organ, and so on and so on. So it's, it's getting of, of like mind, getting with people of like mind and like, um, and really, and, like and, and really not necessarily <laughs> like mind. Let me well, add on right, it. It's, right. it's like but energy. It's, yes. like, it's like drive. Right. Right? It's, yes. Because a lot of times you may not be of the same mind. But you may be of the same energy, and you may be of the same drive. And then whatever contrast you are to this person, it creates a dynamism between you. And whatever it is you guys focus on to create, it happens. Like and that's synergy. In, yes. A synergy. Yeah. That's the word. Yes. And then within an organization, a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons, to, or one reason, uh, the reason uh, why an organization fails is because they don't understand how to specialize. Everyone wants to do everything. Specialization. So specialization. So you have to be able to identify who can do what, you know, and literally put that person at that job and let them do that. Right. See, but a lot of black people went out from being in an organization myself. Oh, no, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. But do you know how to do that? Well, no, I, you know, I, I, I did it. I can learn on the fly, goddammit. <laughs> no, <laughs> shit. Well, what do you just do? Show well? me the, just give me the goddamn wrench. Yes. I go in there and fix it. Exactly. <laughs> what do you do well? And so, like an organ, an organ, the body's not telling an organ what to do. It's operating on its own. So, you know, when you get with somebody and you get with that, you get with the like, when I say like-minded people, then those people are supposed to be able, in, within an organization, that department, Mm. of that organization is supposed to be able to be autonomous and run and according to do uh, excuse me according to, to what the idea of everyone is in that department right right and so that's that's the way you run an organization like a body so if you're not running if your organization is not creating and living on its own you have nothing you have nothing you have no organization well listen we got to take a quick break but when we come back we got a special guest who just called in to go off goddamn jeff brown well, Downtown Jeff Brown just <laughs> called in because he oh, can't Lord. hold it. <laughs> As we go out, I'm going to put it another way in summation of what he just said. Uh, Bobby. If you got a toothache, you don't go see the best blacksmith in town. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy's Bow. <laughs> T-Radio V, the fellowship of the bling. <laughs> Hi, I'm Moby, and you're watching T-Radio V. Yo, yo, what's up, everybody out there? This is Crazy Bone. I am the bum, Keith G. And right now, you're watching T-RadioV.com. TV and radio. Yes. Radio and TV. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See? Okay, right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Hubel from Welcome to the Jungle. You're watching T-Radio V, aren't you? Radio on TV. Terrible idea. In TV. You shut up. <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> Hi, we're Marissa and Juliana Stove. The Stove Twins. And you're watching T Radio V. That's radio in TV. 
Uh, Hi, this is Casey Abrams from American Idol, and you are watching T Radio V. That was too corny. I don't. I loved it. Hey, I'm Dean Kane, and you are watching T Radio V. I'm watching it too, right now. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Organization. Let's start by asking the question, who wrote the book on how to organize? Amazingly, the way most businesses organize all over the world is a design that comes from Aristotle. He is the creator of the non-contradiction principle that says that something cannot be two things at the same time. It has prevailed as the process for acquiring knowledge. It looks like this. Also from Aristotle, we get the process of reason and the syllogism. Theology is built following the same process. The Catholic Church borrows from the same source. Eventually, kingdoms and businesses find the same solution. When the pyramid structure is transferred to business, we get a typical organization chart that looks like this. Here are other examples. All these are typically authoritarian structures. They make horizontal communication difficult. Orders travel vertically downwards and obedience travels upwards. They all work well as a structure for apportioning blame. Many bosses follow the same rule, the golden rule. The man with the gold makes the rules. Employees are only familiar with their very small area. No wonder they don't know what's going on. This is the way business schools teach how to organize a business. It starts from the top. Decide the objective, make the plan, organize, execute, supervise. Stafford Beer, the founder of Management Cybernetics, has found another way. It will work much better in highly complex situations. It is the way nature is organized. From the bottom up, like evolution, starting with bacteria and ending with the human being. From the simple to the complex, like one layer on top of another. Like the brain and the human nervous system. Nature's strategy is repetitive, or, to use the right term, recursive. The same process is repeated over and over. Cells, tissues, organs, body. The mapping looks like this. Where the parts, the smaller operations, and the whole look exactly alike. I will explain this. It is called the viable system model and it works for any living thing with the capacity to have an independent existence. I know it's tedious, but we must reacclimate ourselves, reacquaint ourselves with the basic functionings of the world, of the natural world. Look at that. Kev said the word corporation. Corpus means body, right? Legally, a corporation is a fictitious person, person. with person. rights, with yeah. the same rights you got. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> in, some sen in some sense, it's more because you can't throw a company in jail. Exactly. You can't. <laughs> yes. Listen, man, it's important that we educate ourselves on this type of knowledge. There are a lot of brothers out there who got this knowledge. There are a lot of people who are well, ed who are very educated, who understand this, but yet refuse to yeah. work together. Yeah. Yet refuse to create <laughs> a body. Right? <laughs> Kevin spoke on specialization. Let me just say something about specialization. Specialization is for insects. The human being is capable of godhood. 
But when it comes to business, everybody got to play their part and play their role. But when we look at specialization, we see that as an insect functionality, right? Yo ass was born a drone. That's what the fuck you going to be. You were born queen. That's what you're going to be. <laughs> you were born one of the daughters <laughs> that take care right. of the, you know, the law. That's what you're going to be. Specialization, right? But the thing about the human being, we can master a specialty and still have the yeah, rest yeah. of our life to right. be able to enjoy the godhood that is within us. That's right. Right? But a lot of times what happens is specialization takes that front row seat. What do I mean by that? Who are you? you. Oh, yep. I'm a uh, doctor. Yes. <laughs> no, you're a person who practices <laughs> medicine. Who are you? <laughs> right? <laughs> Most people don't know who the fuck they are. You know, I went to school mm -hmm. and I did this and I did that. <laughs> that's, that's what you've done. That's I not who you are. are. Do you see what I'm saying? So we have to untangle those knots. This goes back to your point about organizing the self first and then becoming a part of an organ and then building a body from there. Does that make sense? Do we still got Jeff Brown? Yes, you do. Ah, shit. Just go yes, ahead do. and do what you do, Jeff. Hello. <laughs> Let Am me get I out on? the way. Yeah, you on, pimp. We're going to get out the way. <laughs> fellas, fellas, as you can hear in the background, I am so dedicated as I wait for my plane. I must be involved with what's going on. And a compliment to the show, it is a whole different experience to listen to it than it is to actually be in there. Mm -hmm. When you listen to this show, you have no idea how bad Uncle Bobby is putting the pipe and the pimp hand down. <laughs> <laughs> One thing is, is, is being, a couple of things are being overlooked. One is that black people, what you're talking about is common thinking for all common people. The issue is black people are in an uncommon situation. Mm. So we don't, we don't have the luxury of thinking that way. The other thing that comes to me is that regardless, regardless, Puffy suffers from this. Uh, to a degree, Oprah suffers from this. So I don't care how much money you got, you suffering from the walking through the Sahara syndrome. Mm. If you walking across the Sahara Desert and come across an oasis after being hungry and funky and thirsty for days, your first instinct is not to go, oh, here's an oasis of water. Let me keep some for the village that I'm out here for. Let me keep some for the further road ahead. No, you gonna jump your funky nasty ass <laughs> over into the water, drink until your belly is distended, and infect the water with the rest of you. Mm. And that is what black people basically do when it comes to money. They <laughs> bathe in it. They, lo they lotion themselves with it. They they eat it. They, they, they consume it all with no thought of a child, a grandchild, a great-grandchild. In the words of Damon Dash, niggas is hustling for their first name and not their last name. <laughs> Ooh, <yeah>. nobody, <laughs> ain't nobody thinking about what you leave behind. If you sure. think about if you watch how niggas spend money, that's what makes niggas go out and buy Escalades. That's worth seventy thousand when you pay it for it, and worth thirty five hundred when you want to trade it in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it's about me right now. That's the definition of the word nigger to me. I only give a damn about me, and I only give a damn about me right now. I don't give a damn about me ten years from now. Mm. Nigga, right now, I need everybody here to know that financially I'm okay. That's why I'm wearing these $150 sneakers. You don't have any idea that my lights are off. I am, I need <laughs> to send out the I'm okay beacon. Mm. Not understanding that you are far from okay. Mm. And every time that I see you with something extremely expensive, you insult yourself. Ooh. Asians look at you and laugh at you. Mm. Arabs look at you and laugh at you because they know they know you ain't got it like that. Mm. You're the only one. 
you're the only one thinking that ignorant shit, and other niggas <laughs> who are around you are thinking that shit. And while I'm on the subject of niggas... Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go ahead go yeah. subject, And I hate to regurgitate, but if you are doing, as a black person, what most niggas is doing, you're probably wrong. Mm. You're probably wrong. Your diet is probably wrong. Mm-hmm. If you are doing what most niggas are doing, which is getting your uh, uh, idea on who to vote for from, from Bishop, you're probably wrong. <laughs> you're probably wrong. Mm. If you are eating chitlins for Thanksgiving, like most niggas, you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see what most wrong. niggas are doing, don't. Don't do what most <laughs> niggas are doing. <laughs> or you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. Most niggas want the new Jordans. They're wrong. <laughs> You got some more, Jeff? I mean, <laughs> I got, Negro, Negro. Uh, uh, um, I think the, 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 the most important thing that I can say with regard to, and uh, you know me, Mr. Gloom, mm. I don't, I think what we are trying to do is clean the fish in a dirty bowl. Mm. The bowl must be emptied out. Mm. The concept of money must be emptied out of the black head. It must. The dollar must crash. I, I fuck with him on this. Niggas mm-hmm. must have to be... Yes, bro, it's not going to happen before that. Because as long as the concept is I am going to move out of the hood instead of making the hood better with my job, I'm mm. not going to stay here and make it better. I'm not going to get the other dudes I went to college with and we're going to all move over by Jordan Down Project and make it better. No. We're all going to Calabasas. <laughs> as, as, as Gated community. As that, and and that's not going to die until there is no money. And that's what's coming up. That's what this whole race riot, this whole race war that they're amping up for. They're almost ready. And the idea is we're going to call the earth of two thirds of the earth's population, but the first people we're going to get rid of is as many niggas as possible. Mm, mm. Uh, I need to Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that, man. You're Shit. very welcome, and I'm just I'm going to listen to the show. All and right, I will take my responses off here. I mean, if, <laughs> hey, if you want to hang on, you can yeah. until your yeah. plane comes. <laughs> it's cool. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Go Absolutely. ahead, I go, love it. go ahead, Bobby. The one, hang. the one thing I, I I just truly love about Jeff Spirit is he's a he's a player. He's a team player. And mm-hmm. he knows when to pass, and he mm-hmm. has no problem by taking the ball and mm-hmm. going straight from the free throw line. <laughs> and I respect Even if he him. ain't got no hops, he's going <laughs> to jump from the free throw line. <laughs> oh, no, I ain't going to dig like that because I done seen the brother drop jewels and gems. Oh, all day in America. And, uh, but something that he said about money that gets lost in the equation is if the dollar crashes tomorrow, there's still going to be a perception of value somewhere. Something is going to be worth something. Right. And that's what we get caught up in is just looking at dollars instead of looking at cents. Because at the end of the day, (laughs) we have the ability to affect change by increasing our net worth, by understanding that it's not so much what a person has in his hand, it's what they're capable of doing. Uh -uh, uh -uh, I've seen uh -uh. so many instances. That's big. That's, that's, God damn, Bobby, that's big. Well, I mean, I've I've lived most of my life uh, broke into Ten Commandments, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Only in the sense of that monetary <laughs> thing. Because I done said it before and I say it again, most people would, sh- would kill to have my Rolodex because most of the people that I it's deal true. with respectfully is not about money. Because right. I done been around people with money and they would trade it in a minute just to be able to have some sense of comfort about the people around them mm. instead of always having to wonder, when is that other shoe going to drop? Mm. Okay, so what we have to really concentrate on is elevating the value of each other. Right. Because I know what you're worth, Zoe. I know what you're worth. The question is, how do we get to a point where we coalesce our in individual right. value right. and then be able to right. merge into a lane where we become unstoppable? Right. Veronica, That's Kev, true. and Doc. Yeah, I think I think one of the muscles that we've lost uh, as a community, it's, we're, it's beginning to reignite now a bit, but we've really, really lost it. We've really lost it, and that is the ability to come together and create tangible, measurable outcomes as a collective, right? So I don't care what the outcome is. If we, if we keep walking around, see, what happens is we end up being this living, breathing, walking reaction to white supremacy. So 
Somebody gets shot, we march. Something goes down, we feel wronged, we cry. Something goes left, we pray. Something right. So we're we're constantly being kept off balance mm-hmm. because we are never taking a proactive stand and saying this is who we are. This is what we're going to do, no matter what. Mm. Mm. And we could do that around money. We could do that around our community and our family. We could decide to do that around the raising of our children. We could do that around the educating of our children. We could be doing that in collective across the board. But what happens is we don't do that, and then we don't trust each other mm-hmm. to execute. Because we just, cause, you know, you just you like, oh, we're going to go to another meeting and Negroes just going to talk. <laughs> because we're not outcome focused. So we don't get to experience ourselves and each other as winning anything. Well, we don't see each other as winners. There you go. See, you know what happens Absolutely. in the black community? Somebody, at, at, check me if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong as two left shoes. But we tend to give all of our attention and focus to the celebrity of our people. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we back celebrities. We don't back the brother on the block. He got to raise up and become somebody quote, first. quote unquote something. <laughs> like we don't have a spirit quality Geiger counter anymore where we right. could just feel, okay, that wow. motherfucker's somebody. Yep. Wow. He that that's something right there. Right? It's it's let's wait and see. <laughs> if he blow up. Oh, that <laughs> brother, remember me? <laughs> and nigga, I, I gave you your yeah. first pair of shoestrings. <laughs> yeah. You blow it up now, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Jeff, you trying to get in there? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, something you just said just rung a fucking bell <laughs> smooth in my spirit. What happened, what Jeff? What is one of the favorite put downs of people my age and a little bit younger? Fuck you, nigga. You ain't nobody. Ooh. Yep. That I don't see no television. You ain't nobody. <laughs> what is the, in the words of the late great James Hanna, mm. as much as niggas say they worship Jesus, they don't. They worship money. Wow. <laughs> as soon as somebody <laughs> with money fucked up, what's the first thing niggas say? Yeah, but he got money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he got that money though. That nigga got cake. <laughs> I don't care what the fuck he do, he got that cake. He got that cake though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because and, and, and because very very few of us had nobody had all we had was our morals. Mm. All wow. Was our our testicular fortitude. So that's what the dudes of my grandfather's era, the old Ashy brothers. This is what they measured one another by. Right. Mm. We don't measure by that anymore. We measure by who looks like they got out. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to get in. Everybody wants to get out. Mm. Same, same, same. I can smoke a bag of that. Jeff, we got to take a quick break. <laughs> T Radio V, the voice of reason is on. <laughs> this ain't the voice of reason. This is the Zo What Morning Show. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Your ass in here, boy. <laughs> I'm excited, goddammit. The Fellowship of the Bling. <laughs> Who thought that this show was going to be this crazy? <laughs> Fellowship of the Bling, man. We're talking about organization, man. Why is it so important? We'll be back in 2.2 T Radio V, Radio NTV. <laughs> Chapter 10, we talk about the difference between being embittered, embattled, or embittered. So, if you're embittered, of course you're holding on to things. You're resentful, you're resistant. If you're embattled, you're fighting. No, I don't I don't accept that. I don't want that. But if you're open and you're allowing the process to unfold and flower within you and beyond you, you have an opportunity to become embittered. And chapter 10 goes into detail on how to stop being embittered, how to stop looking for the win by being embattled, and how to evolve and expand to a space of embitteredment. I mean, it's an incre- it's an incredible work, man, and I'm excited about it. Sing. Mm-hmm. 
is revolution. I'm hotter than little sister today about the assault on our health and our wellness from the doctor's office to hospitals from one end of this country to the other. A couple of weeks ago, I went to visit a brother who five years ago when he was 45 was on top of the world with the exception of the way he took care of himself. He had a very successful uh, security business. He had front row Lakers seats, thriving. But I tried to warn him about his health, man. He thought he could continue to eat any and everything, drink any and everything. And uh, his knife and fork became deadly weapons. And he celebrated his 50th birthday in a rest home, not a hospital. He started out at Cedar Sinai. And when they got through with him over there, he celebrated his 50th birthday clinging to life in a rest home. I want everybody that can hear this right now to understand. Ask your doctor what? Here's what you need to ask your doctor. Are you going to make me well or are you going to get fed off of killing me? Because right now there is a juxtaposition of wellness and well-being that is not playing out in the patient's favor. The doctor took an oath not to do no harm. And tell me the last time you visited a doctor and didn't leave out of there with a prescription <laughs> that was mm -hmm. full of stuff that's gonna kill you. People, please, take your wellness into your own hands and <clears> not <throat> the advice of somebody who is working for a corporation who is only interested in profiting off of your sickness. Take care of yourself, people. Mm. I can smoke a bag of that. Doc? Yeah? I need tips for organization. Now, there's a lot of black people watching this show that's saying, so why the fuck is that white man in there? <laughs> is that what it's and you always bring <laughs> white people to these closed meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some tips, Doc. <laughs> well, if you want to get organized, what do you do? I think one of the things is to ask the question, stay in the question. Mm. If you actually stay in the question instead of making conclusions all the times about things, what will happen is you will, you'll actually receive answers. answers. Mm -hmm. You'll receive mm -hmm. solutions to the problem that you have. Many times what happens is that we can, we can become completely disorganized by making all kinds of conclusions about things without pondering, considering, mm. staying in the question. That's if right. you stay in the question, what happens is it allows you to organize your thoughts into something, again, coherent like a plan one that involves not only the present, but moving forward into the future. So sitting down, writing out what it is that you want in your life, 
believe it or not, is incredibly powerful. It's something mm. that most people don't do. Sit down with, a, with a, a notepad and a pen and create your vision for what it is that you want. When you write it down, you have to go through the <coughs> process of literally organizing it in your mind. You have a document on a piece of paper. You can put it up on your refrigerator or anywhere in your in where you live, and you can see it every day. And that repetition helps you to keep that organization and build that, and so it becomes a reality in your life. It programs both your conscious and your subconscious mind. And it's the same kind of thing that you can use if you want to have a sense of organization in your family. How many families have petty arguments over he said, she said issues all the time, mm. right? Yep. Uh, we argue about the, the trash going out when it's really not about the trash, is it? <laughs> it's about the things that we haven't spoken to one another about. Mm. It's all the petty grievances that we've allowed to build up without right. our judgments and our conclusions. Mm. So what we do is we take the trash as, and we make that as an excuse to argue with one another. If you had something as simple as a common house code, you could actually write down, here are the things that we all agree to do in this house to make it an organized place for us to live together. There's no more he said, she said. What there is is there is a list of things. It's right there, it's publicly available, and we can all work together. And if we have a grievance or disagreement, we can go back to that piece of paper with that agreement or that contract, and we can make this house a home. Mm. That's another simple thing. <coughs> it's the same thing that, uh, in my in my opinion, that forward-looking uh, uh, companies use and mm. do. Uh, oftentimes, what they call them is uh, missions, or mission statements, uh, vision statements, things like that, mm -hmm. where you write down all of those values that you have, the vision that you have, and people can go back to it over and over and over again and see how it's going. Continue to keep the organization and continuing to move forward with that organization. Mm. Does that make sense? That's shit. <coughs> to white people, yes. <laughs> how did that, that not make sense to black people, though? Because that was some common, I could apply everything he said yeah, small to rooms. multifaceted areas of our living, and it'll make it right. better. Uh, what I meant by that, I was being cynical, actually. Okay. <laughs> little shit. All right, let us know when you're being yourself. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, it's syncopation. You know, uh, uh, the same information uh, to a groove maybe would reach us. Because sometimes we're, we're, we're emotional people. All people are emotional, but black people are really emotional. Yeah, and if yeah. we don't communicate to us in a certain Way. rhythm, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we just don't connect to it. Right. Right? Like the, the stuff that you had, if that had been uh, wrapped that same oh, information yeah. to a certain yeah. uh, demographic. Right. Go deeper, Bobby. They, there they, it is. They could relate to that. Right. But That's true. In the, in, in the syncopation that she was speaking to, I was, uh, we were just, you know, I was, I was drifting off. So <laughs> we just had to learn. <laughs> we got to find that groove, you know, and, and stay in that pocket with right. our people. The information is the same. It's universal. Right. But it's the way that it's delivered, I think, that's important. But then this the Bobby reason. want a motherfucker laying down like uh, <laughs> Marvin Gaye singing it to him. <laughs> I hey, want that's how a lot of people get shit though. You know what? <laughs> to come together. Believe me, our generation, that soundtrack wasn't just the music, man. That became a mantra. That was something though. It was. Yeah. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Just open up the dope. <laughs> I get it myself. I get it myself. I'm just telling you now. Well, one of the, one of the reasons <laughs> that we it. were talking about doing this show, and Zoe knows that I deal with the law all the time. And in dealing with that, um, you see corporations, actually corporations, foundations, and trust are pretty much, they have the most power in law. And um, because they're a body of, <clears throat> they're a body of people who can, who, who are of same mind and who can back each other up. And so when I'm, when I'm looking at black people and they're always talking about, well, this is happening to us, why this is happening to us, because you're not organized. I mean, it's really... It, I can't, exp I can't express enough how important it is for you to do that. So, like, going to the Black Lives Matter thing, it's a Black Lives Matter movement. Now, if you had a Black Lives Matter organization or foundation where you guys are giving dues and creating, and, 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 uh, creating laws and, and going creating over, wealth, and creating wealth, then you guys can have some power. But, I mean, so there's two ways to have power in law. So you can know the law and have power, just individually. You can definitely have that. But even if you don't know the law, if you have unity, that shit 
even trumps the person who knows the law because they're scared of uh, they're scared of numbers. So when you have when you're backed and you then you have knowledge as well. But just the backing, if you if you're there and you guys are you, you guys are unified and formed together, it is so hard. It is so hard for them to do away with anything that you're talking about. So this is the importance of what we're doing with this show. You have to understand, in order to do anything in the future, because everything is corporate now, there's a corporate, there's a corporate world government, there's corporate everything, you have to organize in order to get anything done coming in the future. You know, you mentioned the, the pieces earlier, Zoe, so, mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there thinking, uh, for example, Jeff is coming out with a, a new show that deals with one of his passions, you know, vintage cars and that kind right. of thing. And I'm constantly thinking, when he drops that, not even before he drop it, because I love that brother's spirit and what he brings to my life in, in just day-to-day -day ways. He's good people. And we have to learn to just uh, mimic certain behaviors. In other words, how can I help that brother without asking for anything, but just knowing that that reciprocity yes. is in the mix? There you, go. you know what I mean? It's going to come back to me. It's going to come back through me. And we have to create those That's models right. wherein... I look for opportunities to enhance your life knowing that at some point that circle is going to come exactly. back to me. Without looking for, for uh, immediate reward. gratification. Yeah, remedial, you know, immediate yeah. reward. Yeah. Shit. Wasting my goddamn time. <laughs> you fucking with my money. <laughs> no, it's just like our relationship. You That's know, true. I, right. Man, you've been vibing like that for years, man. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not a, a transitional thing where, you know, there's an immediate exchange, but right. it's like we just right. down with each other. But that's why know? we can't get shit going and you know, Caucasian people, they, they can run organizations, I mean, like nothing. They, it's a science to it. <laughs> I mean, it's called... It's called uh, He's laughing like, that's some bullshit. Design. We don't like each other like <laughs> that. No, 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 it ain't about liking no, each other. It ain't about liking each other. It's, it's about, about a science of how to, how to do value. shit. Like, running an organization, they have a science to it. It's called organizational design or cybernetics. I mean, it's a literal science that you go and learn to, how, to know how to run an organization. Which black people have no idea what the fuck they doing when they go, oh, hey, hey, let's get together and do this shit. No, no, that's not how you do shit. Go get the information of how to do it and how to come together and then go ahead and do it. Well, actually, there's another <laughs> element to it. <laughs> there are people like yourself who know how to do it. I've got a friend I've mentioned many times who is an organizational genius by the name of Wendell Stimlin, Black IPO. I ain't got time to try to learn how to do the things that he already know how to do. I just need to know when to pass the ball <laughs> and then when to catch it and run with it myself. This my shot right here. Right, I'm right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. You're right, no, but there's gonna it. there's gonna be a leader who does go out and get that information. So you know, every in just an know who they are. Yeah, know who they know are. are. Yes. And make sure the other Absolutely. folks get out the way. You need to exactly. stop them people that want and the ball. Yes. And say, look at man, you ain't hit a shot. Kobe in weeks. Right. Pass the damn <laughs> ball. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Excuse in, me. I <laughs> oh, lost his damn mind. Now. Doc and then Veronica. I see you though. I, I see you. Doc and then Veronica. Kobe. <laughs> I think a lot of, of being able to work as an individual with a group of people also has to do with being able to take the perspective or the precision of another person, right? If you're talking about whether it's sports or whether it's a, in a business, a lot of times, uh, you know, what we don't really get in this culture is um, sit down and go, okay, what is this person? Uh, here's a simple question. At the end of my life, if I look back, if there's a movie that plays and this movie shows me my entire life and what I have to do is review my whole life, how am I going to make, how did I make each person feel that I was with through the course of my entire life? Mm. How would, if you right. took that on right now, how would that affect your, your thinking, your feeling, and your behavior right now? If I know that the di when I die, I go back and I look at this movie of my life, how did I make each one of you guys feel today? How did I make each one of the people that is listening feel today? Mm -hmm. With the way that I composed myself, with what I considered, with my words, how did I make the guys in the, in the production booth feel? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying is we spend so much time focusing on ourselves and do I look okay and is it every, you know, am I safe? Is the world a safe? Oh, no, it's not safe. But if we spend some time thinking about how is this person doing? How am I affecting them? What happens is we begin to come together because we recognize that at the end of the day, we are all the same. I mean, I, we can talk about skin color and race all we want, but we are all human beings and we are all souls here on planet Earth, on campus Earth, doing our thing. Wow. So I could smoke a bag of that. Veronica? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things I've observed a lot in dealing with organizations is um, I find that we tend to have an incessant need to grab the mic. And I would say that my observation (laughs) is that we would prefer attention over results a lot of times in our community. And that comes, usually that comes from people who have been deeply traumatized. In other words... When we're going through life and we experience these really traumatic events, these kind of soul-wounding events, then we fundamentally stop growing up. We, we actually get frozen in space and time at the moment of that trauma. And if we don't go back and resolve that trauma, then we tend to deal with whatever the trauma, the, the material of the trauma, we tend to deal with it and from a very childish perspective, from a very egoic perspective, from a very look at me, what about me, what about my survival perspective. And so... What I observe is that when we come together and then we have all these kind of half-wounded children in the room <laughs> Ooh, trying yep. to get big shit done, yep. then <laughs> Bring we, it tend, we, tend to, we tend to, we prefer to have the attention than to have the result. Yep. At some point, <laughs> when we want the result, we have to grow up and get over ourselves and get past ourselves and even get past our own opinion mm. so that we can sort of... We can direct our energy and our talent for the highest and greatest good. And that's what we, we've been so wounded that we can't seem to see the highest and collective good. There you go. <laughs> wow. 100 Listen. Chief, 100 Chief, no ending. We, we just got to we gotta take a break and absorb that shit. That was heavy. We'd rather have attention than results. Shit. Listen, this is the Zo What Morning Show. <laughs> Veronica just dropped an atomic, nuclear, intellectual, (laughs) psychological bomb on the whole crew. It's the Fellowship of the Bling, or lack thereof. Mm, Shit, it's just me and Samwise (laughs) Gamgee right now. Everybody gone. (laughs) We'll be back in 2.2 seconds. Samwise Gamgee. Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy and Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor, and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is is that play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eli? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Andy D on T Radio V. Bing, bang, bing, boom, boom, right? Yeah. Andy D on T Radio V. Bobbity, bibbity, bobbity, boo. Andy D. Auntie Radio V. The Andy Dick Show, Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! So but Paul, we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Radio in TV.
I got you. That was the I got you yep, bridge. I got you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Why is it so important that we show these types of videos, man? Because... I, I don't want to get into my final thought just yet because I'm, I'm going to tear some ass up in this <laughs> motherfucker because I'm pissed. You know, uh, I was uh, I was playing tennis yesterday. I played two sets. First set I played with a brother who is not quite as talented as he used to be, and there was a time when he was better than I was. And I told him before we started, I said, first of all, man, do not try to tell me how to play because we got beat the other day and we was cussing each other out and damn near fell out of our friendship for 20 years. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. I know you don't run like you used to. Go I got to add it. Here go Bobby. <laughs> because I won't be able to like talk shit to. after we thumped these boys that should beat us, right? And since we had that conversation, I was able to go ahead and make shots that I knew I could make that he no longer could make. Specialization. Because it was about, <laughs> like, look, I got now, that. It was about winning. Right. It, it was about co-opting for the purpose of being able to come to that right. net, look at them guys, right. and talk shit because we just whooped them. And then the next set I played, better athlete that I'm playing with, younger dude. He's going for everything. And I'm like, oh, man, we ain't going <laughs> to make it, man. And I use that as an example that sometimes when we put all of the pieces together, what comes down to it is who wants it the most. Mm -hmm. and, and going forward as a people, we got to understand losing sucks. That's mm. true. It really does. It's, it's embarrassing, man, to keep watching us lose. But time after true. time, got all the talent, all the brain power, all of everything that it would take to be a successful people, and we keep finishing last in the race to be first. So the first thing we got to do is get sick and tired of losing. But what you did, though, you say, look, you can't run no more. I can. I got that. I got that. Oh, yeah. I so you delicate. You understood yeah. who could do what. Oh, yeah. And then you said, yeah. let me get that. I got and that. And then you do, yeah. <laughs> you do that. Got it. So I That's think what you're talking about <laughs> now, because this happens on the basketball court. I do this with Chris all the time. You can't play D. <laughs> <laughs> let me get your man because he killing you. <laughs> he said, no. Uh, Chris will get uh, an attitude. Uh, I got him. Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> for the team, <laughs> let me lock this dude down. For the team. You know this. Can we get this win? Chris like, hell no. <laughs> they don't even invite me. They don't even invite me. <laughs> they don't even want me to make, you know. Where y'all put no. Chris is back there going, it's like, never happened. Mm -hmm. Chris it happens. Never it happens. Happen. Listen, it happens Chris every mm -hmm. time we play. It'd be one little fat <laughs> white boy. He's about 67 years old. He's a lawyer. He taking Chris to the home. What? I said, oh, Chris, no. you going to no. let this old no. man break your ankle? Oh, hey, man, I got him, man. Oh, man. I got him. <laughs> That's the night. Oh, that's the first, that's the first right he there. Right. <laughs> Chris said he couldn't take it. <laughs> hey, hey. This ain't the voice of reason. Don't ever, oh, don't ever get on the mic. Oh, he got on hilarious. the mic. He, he, hey, man, he looking at you like he got oh, something for you, man. Hey. <laughs> so you can't get it. Oh, I got it. I got oh, it. Man. Let me get it. Mm. Shit. But no, seriously. Yes. You done cut your mic off, man. <laughs> <laughs> this going to be Chris' last day. Yeah, cut your mic off. I see right now. This is going to be Chris' last you know day. As the new host. This your last day. So what morning oh, show? Okay. <laughs> right, this is Chris' last day. Chris think I'm kidding. This is his last day. Hey, that was a good one, though. But no. <laughs> so much for organization. No, but let me just say this. Because Bobby brought up a good point. There has to be... Like, you have to move your ego to the side. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Right? Yeah, you man. have to move your ego to the Gotta side. Gotta want to win, man. So, it, if it's the, the bigger picture is we're a team yes. and this is our objective, winning. Oh, yes. Sometimes the ego goes, but I got it. <laughs> I, I can do this. I can handle it. Hey. No. Not I'm today. telling you. <laughs> not today. Not today. Not <laughs> today. Not today. So, let me step in and handle it. Please. Mm -hmm. Please. Do you see what I'm saying? Please. Yes. Let me step in and handle Please. it. Please. And a good leader will say, will understand that and say, okay. Winning is <laughs> contagious, man. It really is, yeah. man. I have uh, played with guys <laughs> like Zoe, you know, light skin, shoot real good. What that? What? And, uh, light skin. What light skin got to do with anything, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> man. You know, light skin, shoot real good. And you just, you know, they loaf half the time, but they can flat out they score, man. <laughs> no, we need a basket, man. Was I loafing when I was d your ass up? We need a basket. Bobby was surprised. <laughs> he said, oh, shit, he we don't need play a, me. We need a basket, <laughs> right? Let me handle it. I'm a, I'm a pretty good shooter, but they done sunk in. They done backed off of me. They done cut the okay. lane off. And this is for the game. Okay. Let me, let me get that. 
I'm war out guarding his man all night long because he ain't playing no defense, all right? But the boy can shoot, man. And right we now. need this basket <laughs> to win. So I pass him the ball. And you know what? He make the shot. And okay. then he look at me and he say, man, good looking out. It's no greater <laughs> feeling, man, because now we go get this trophy, man. You Thank know you. what I mean? Instead of him going off yes. with the girls, cause you know he done, he had twenty eight points and right. they forgot he ain't guarded nobody all night long. You know, oh so now God. it's all messed up. That's it's the, nothing greater than winning. That's man. like the the Scottie Pippen Tony Kukoc thing when Tony, when the game was on the line, they were down by two, and uh, Phil Jackson he he designs the play to go to Tony Kukoc, and then Scottie Pippen says, "Well, I'm not going in the game." He sits down. Phil Jackson says, "All right, then sit your ass down." Tony Kukoc goes in there and, hit the the shot. and makes the shot. Fuck Why? you, Scotty. Tony Kukoc <laughs> is a better three-point shooter than you are. Man, come you on. You can man. shoot good three-pointers, <laughs> but Tony Kukoc is a great three-point shooter. Right. Let's get the trophy. <laughs> he, wants, he does that better. We right. got to change the culture. Let's go after the trophy, man. You know and and you know what? I'm going to add this, too. Um, when raising kids, it's always good to put them into team sports. Because right. then they're to, educated yes, on, on the to, team yes, concept. On how to work with mm. Pete, yes. You see what I'm yes. saying? Yes. Uh, and, and, and Absolutely. You know, I, I know people don't like Kobe or whatever, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say the team is always bigger than the yes. player, than any one player. Mm. And I think Kobe understands that, and I think other people understand that too. You can't mm. – Kobe is – you remember when they had them bum ass teams? Yeah. Kobe <laughs> was against Jerry, and and uh, he was against all those people's neck. Like, mm -hmm. you better get somebody in here. I got a few <laughs> years. I need mm -hmm. help. And you'll see LeBron yelling the same thing right now. Yo, I need help. I can't beat the Warriors by myself. Mm -hmm. When you get kids with that early team concept, right? And there's always a hierarchy <coughs> on the team. Oh, that dude is the star. Mm. But you know what? If I go in there and get the 50-50 balls and the rebounds mm -hmm. and play the best D, then I'm going to be right next to him when we lifting that trophy. He's going to rely on me, and then we build trust. You never win without the, that catch that you're talking about. The that, 50, that dirty player. The that, better yeah. world piece. Yeah. You don't yeah. win without those cats, man. You don't and win guess what? Them. We need those kind of cats in yes. the community. It, yes. We got them. They just in the wrong role right now. We got Nook Nook them out in front. Yes. When you nook Nook. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> nook Baby nook. Diamond and Stomach Ache them. You know. Baby Diamond and Stomach Ache. <laughs> they, they, uh, they getting all of the, the, the mic time right now. And then we pass it over to Bishop. Baby uh, Diamond uh, and <laughs> Stomach Ache. Yeah. Baby Diamond and Stomach Ache. <laughs> <laughs> Are these gang names? Okay. Hey, everybody know them, man. You know, because they're the terrorize the neighborhood, man. And we got to snatch the ball back from them. And, and identify the people that put in that work, man, that you can't, that's irrefutable. I'm going to go back to it. You can't lead people right. if you can't feed people, man. That's the bottom That's line. true indeed. That's true indeed. Veronica and then Doc? Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. You were talking about the way we have to educate children. And one thing that I, I will say that my observation in, in the way, you know, cause my kids went to school with a lot of, like, very, very wealthy white kids, right? And so I got <laughs> to see firsthand how they educate their kids. And so understand that like that team dynamic and i mean they put them in teams as early as second grade had had them producing powerpoint presentations in the collective in third and fourth grade like like the whole concept of team and you know they and they, they put them on instant messaging at very young ages and have them be very collaborative <laughs> around homework so um even though white folks tend to be very competitive with everybody else amongst each other they are very competitive slash collaborative, and so as a, as just a way of operating. And so I think that we that that's something that we have got to learn the art and skill of because if it, it without it, there's nothing. I mean, we can, there's, we can't get any of this done without the spirit of collaboration. But that means. That means you have to sort of super, super, super supersede your ego and mm -hmm. give yourself up to the cause. And compromise. And, and choose people that she. are equipped enough <laughs> and they're competent enough and their subject matter expertise to be able to actually lead. You know, niggas be like, give myself up. <laughs> Shit. You tripping. One thing that you didn't see on that ant bridge, 
Some ants fall. Yeah. <laughs> Niggas is not falling. Like, <laughs> what? So I'm on bridge detail today, nigga? <laughs> I damn near fell the last time. Fuck niggas, yeah, yeah, fuck, fuck that. And that's the problem. We mm -hmm. don't have niggas in our community. When I say niggas, y'all know what it mean. I don't have to keep prefacing what the right. fuck it mean. For those newcomers who don't mm -hmm. know what it mean, go look it up. Thank you. But we don't have niggas that's willing to sacrifice at all for everybody uh, else. Uh, we have them. They just didn't get they due. I I'm talking say, about today, Bobby. Yes, we have them today. This I, evening. We I want to say something. Um, if you guys want to uh, see more videos on organizational skills, just go to the Real Nagas channel and just type, uh, click on that playlist. And there's about 30-something videos on organization, leadership, teamwork. So you can go ahead and understand and learn everything that everybody else is learning on how to put together an organization. So what? Crazy topic today. When we come back, final thoughts fellowship of the bling hey you better get bobby with that kobe shit on that final I got a couple of bullet points. Samuel Cartwright, father of psychiatry, created a condition, a medical condition, called drapedomania, meaning you must be crazy as fuck to want to run away from massa. And the only way to heal drapedomania is to whoop you. And we got niggas today that's scared to run away from this system. Now, I always use this quote because it's one of the most profound quotes I've ever seen in my life. There are billions of quotes out there that are profound. But when it comes to America today, this quote just, shit, it's, it's like a hot dog. It's all American. It is no measure of health to be totally integrated into a sick society, black folk. Now, if the black community is, uh, if the black community is an organism, then the niggas who align themselves with white supremacy is cancer. Thank you. <laughs> for the black community as an organism. The, the, the sisters for Trump. You're a cancer for your own community. Now, black people and Jews have a lot in common, but you don't see a gang of Jews just like, yo, the Crips, that's the shit we should get behind. They don't support shit that ain't theirs, really. Let's, can we be honest? They don't. They support their own. They make sure their own interest is taken care of, right? So we got to start looking at people like that as cancers to the community. If you're in alignment with the dominant system, please understand, the dominant system gives you, the user in citizen, racism. But the back end user is using classism. <laughs> right? Just like Bobby pointed out today on the, um, uh, 60 Minutes. They got a whole network of snitches, over 100,000 snitches that are designed, and they're going after white folk to send them to prison because the private prison is a corporation that needs bodies. Any bodies will take niggas because they're easy to get. But shit, niggas get in and out too. We need white folk, we need Latinos, we need anybody. That's the private prison. Do you understand? The end user... You're using fucking racism. Oh, they're against us. They're against us. But the, the back end user, 
back in the server room, <laughs> the administrator over here is using classism. I'm just, I'm just saying. Who's down to join me for community visioning sessions? Same point Doc used. We get together at a local Starbucks. I'll set it up. Meet me. We'll all bring a journal. And let's sit down and start building a plan. That's what Kevin said. You can't have a corporation unless you got a plan, a mission statement. What's your bylaws looking like? <laughs> right? Hey, let's get together and have some visioning sessions. See what we can come up with. Some type of organization may come out of that. Right? Oh, no, niggas. Gonna, is the game on? Is the shit going to cost me? The fuck? I got to sacrifice anything. Gas. My attention, if I got to sacrifice anything, I ain't doing shit. Unless, unless I get paid for, you know, unless I get paid. You, you niggas paying? You know I came up with that idea, right? <laughs> oh, man. The most common place for blacks to feel power is the act of tearing each other down. I know that shit hurt. This is where we feel power. Because in a society that renders us powerless, the only charge we can get that makes us feel powerful is to, nigga, what are those? What are you wearing? <laughs> what school do you, nigga, you're not educated. <laughs> I'm educated, I'm this, I'm that, I got bread. I, that, that. That's where we get power, is tearing each other down. This is why the fellowship of the bling is almost impossible for us to establish because all of our ideation that is associated with success was written by somebody else. Yeah? And just like Jeff said, when the dollar falls, what are you worth now, nigga? Because, listen, currencies do fall. Please understand. Wake your dumb ass up. Please understand. Every fiat currency that has ever existed has fallen all the way back to zero worth. What makes you think the dollar won't? Oh, nigga, I'm gonna keep get rich and die trying, nigga. Okay, all right. The fellowship of the bling is necessary to move forward into the future. The future leaders must have a contingency plan for natural disasters. Must have a contingency plan for, for solar energy must have a contingency plan for sustainability, must have a contingency plan for agriculture. These niggas ain't thinking about nothing. Nigga, I'm getting a new Audi. And the, and the 11s is coming, the Jordan 11s is coming, nigga. I'll kill a nigga for them. You understand? Let a nigga cut me in line, I'll kill a nigga for them. This is our problem as a people. I'm Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. Zoe what, morning show, this is what we do. I urge you guys to support everything everybody in here is doing. Everything Veronica Conway is doing. Everything Zoe Williams is doing. Everything Bobby Glanton is doing. Everything Doc Barham is doing. Everything Kevin Barringer is doing. I urge you to go out right now. Cash mob everybody's movement. And if there are other black businesses out there that need that, don't let the dollar stay in uh, our community only fucking six, six hours. Damn it. Six hours. Come on. Go cash mob the book right now. If you got it, buy it again and give it to somebody for Christmas. I am ZoeWilliams.com. This was the Zoe Up Morning Show. We'll be back next week with another heater. I appreciate you all. And follow me to Dash Radio <coughs> for the voice of reason. We out. Deuces. Say it ain't so How you gonna let them devils turn you into a hoe Maybe you was always a bitch And niggas didn't know Maybe you decided to switch When you got all that dough But the truth is about to tell them Where the fuck you can go Fuck that nigga and fuck them shoes And fuck that nigga and fuck them shoes And fuck that nigga and fuck them shoes And fuck that nigga with them high price shoes For real And I don't care if you my blood or my cousin If black lives don't matter Black money does nigga Fuck marching Fuck burning up the town Stop You are watching T-Radio Me, Radio and TV.